to start with the words 2023. Please welcome your host, Edith Bove. so so nice I love that thank you for making me do that John I was terrified but it was beautiful and um, good evening I am genuinely giddy and overjoyed to be with you once again here in Glasgow for BAFTA Scotland Awards to celebrate the achievements and the brilliant creativity of Scotland's screen industry in the past year I'm slightly out of breath I just walked and um, thank you to our fabulous nominees and guests, all of you for being here and digging out those glad drags. You look fabulous and we massively appreciate you all being here. Uh, and to you watching online or on those things that we called televisions, um, our viewers, it is fantastic to have you with us and thank you for all your votes. And let us just for a wee second appreciate the power of voting. How else? Will we get Nigel Farage out of the jungle as quick as possible? Anyway. <laughs> the votes are in. So we can announce your favourite Scott on screen. Let's just take a look at these beautiful nominees on this screen. Look at them. Some happier than others. Brian Cox, Hamza Yassin. Uh, Lauren Lyle, Lewis Capaldi, Meryl Williams and Tony Curran. Good luck to you all. We will also be honouring two exceptional Scots for their outstanding contribution to our industry. An Oscar and BAFTA award winning production sound mixer and recordist. The hugely talented and wonderful Stuart Wilson, ladies and gentlemen. Where are you, Stuart? Where are you? And a much-loved actress who's carved out the most brilliant career and entertained us all and people all over the world, the wonderful Shirley Henderson, ladies and gentlemen. But that's all to come. That is all to come. Uh, as this year's ceremony gets underway, we'll keep in mind the colleagues who are putting themselves in danger to bring us news from conflict zones around the world, we send our huge admiration and profound gratitude to you all. Thank you. It's been a tough year for our industry and for freelancers, but glimmers of good news are on the horizon. For, as Jude mentioned, uh, one thing, the disputes in the US, which have severely affected our workforce, have been settled. On the production front, Prime Videos, the rig shot entirely at Leeds' first stage studios, hit our screens in January, and the cracking cast, including Martin Comston and Ian Glenn, just wrapped on season two. The Sean Connery Foundation and the National Film and Television School in Scotland announced a joint talent initiative in Leith, establishing a creative hub around the existing studio complex and helping Scottish filmmakers take their work to the next level. The Rebus re reboot began production in Edinburgh with, that's hard to say, Rebus reboot <laughs> began in Edinburgh and Glasgow uh, with Outlander's Richard Rankin stepping into the famous detective's shoes whilst Alex Ferns, Katie Lung and James Cosmo have been shooting BBC series Night Sleeper, a real-time thriller set during a train journey from Glasgow to Edinburgh. If it's half as tense as that midnight dash to the loo without socks on the sleeper, we are in for a winner. <laughs> uh, we had the return of Annika for season two, and the heavenly John Hamm appeared alongside David Tennant and Michael Sheen in Prime Video's 
good omens too. Shot across central Scotland with Bathgate's Pyramid Studios hosting Michael Sheen's bookshop. Glasgow Film Festival had a bumper year and Edinburgh Film Festival returned thanks to its dedicated team and the support of Screen Scotland. The Edinburgh Film House crowdfunder campaign continues. Yes, it does. In the hope of opening the doors to the film fans once again. So get involved, help open the doors, everybody. It's still there and needs your help. STV celebrated being the most popular peak time TV channel in Scotland for a fifth year. STV, yes, where are you? Give yourself a round of applause, surely. There you are. <laughs> STV Studios went back behind bars for the second series of Channel 4's excellent prison series, Screw, and entertained the nation by inviting more celebrities and civilians to take on the mighty bridge of lies. The BBC delivered a raft of high quality productions, including many of tonight's nominees. More on that later. I, for one, was delighted that Life on the Bay returned uh, for a second series, bringing some fun and sunshine from the family run holiday park on the Fife Coast. In fact, I'm very much looking forward to getting back in the booth for season three uh, starting next year. Whilst on the sporting front, Aberdeen 83, once in a lifetime gathered a stellar cast of contributors, including the one and only Sir Alex Ferguson. And BBC Alba uh, kicked off 2023 in bold fashion with a supercharged new drama, Anne Clawmore, delivering tales of passion and intrigue in a Hebridean tweed, which I'm itching to see. That's it, that's all I've got, I'm sorry, okay, that's it, I'm done. Um, right, whilst I catch my breath and lubricate my larynx, let's take a look at the talent recognised by BAFTA Scotland tonight. fighting the Japanese with dysentery. How do they fight it? From blowpipes. We should be looking into that. We knew how we live. You know, you haven't even asked me what happened. Oh my God, he's doing some real slow motion ninja moves. No one's going to give you the life you want. You have to go out and get it. Made a lot of people's Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> That's very pretty. business. So great. I don't know about you, but I love a montage. Nothing better than a montage. So great. Now listen, before we begin, uh, I know this is going to be a little bit painful for many to hear this evening. I've been really thinking about the best way to share this news with you, but 
we are resting the football cards and VAR this year. I'm sorry, the red card, yellow card's gone. I know it's going to be hugely disappointing for everybody. But uh, I will still be ready with a friendly arm to guide you gently off stage. If you outstay, you're welcome. I am, after all, someone with your best interests at heart, but also someone who wants their dinner. So, uh, yeah. And whilst it's important to, you know, say thank you, maybe save your undeniable wit and wisdom to get that trending on TikTok later, yeah? Save that for later. Uh, right then, on with the show, my friends. And tonight's first award named this year's very best single documentary. Backstage with the gold envelope is someone who I am afraid to say is responsible for one of the year's most disappointing pieces of media news. She announced that after the next general election, she will stand down after more than 30 years presenting Newsnight. No! <laughs> Which, apart from anything, will mean a huge drop in business for the London to Glasgow sleeper. <laughs> Please salute the broadcasting legend that is Kirsty Wall! <laughs> <laughs> Love is you too. First award, big award. Three compelling stories are in contest for tonight's award. They include an investigation into the dark heart of the battle in Afghanistan, how a classic tale became a festive institution, and the inner circle of the revered fashion designer Karl Lagerfeld. They reveal all in Karl Lagerfeld except whether the cat got the cash. Let's take a look. Single documentary. She can buy, she can scratch shoes. She's not a nice girl. The mysterious Mr. Lagerfeld. Is she in any way a little bit of a diva? Oh, she's a diva. Oh, she's an enormous diva. I've never seen anything like this. And if she doesn't want, well, it's her decision. We won't force her. The Snowman, the film that changed Christmas. one boot, that's another boot, pulling on a hat. War and Justice, the case of Marine A. The Ministry of Defence has confirmed that seven Royal Marines have been arrested on suspicion of murder in Afghanistan. Fuck me, I'll say. He was the enemy at the time. You know, his choice to pick up a weapon and try and kill us. You got it, stupid! He's a Marine, you want, that? You want him fucking dead at that point. Come on, boy, let's away. Three great films in contention for the single documentary, and the BAFTA Scotland Award goes to the mysterious Mr. Lagerfeld. so much first up wow well, um thank you BAFTA and a huge thank you to the people up here with me tonight to our fantastic editor David Hill and assistant producer Callum Leslie to Mark Bell from the BBC who supported the film from day one and didn't think I was crazy when I pitched an idea about a cat set to inherit millions <laughs> to Katie Lander from Fine Stripe and also Sue Summers who isn't here tonight Missing too is the film's incredible director, Michael Waldman. He really is the heart of this film and he will be thrilled to receive this award. Thanks to the production team, to Dee, Lisa, Izzy and Ross, to our co-producer, Natasha Fraser, and our distributor, Cineflix, 
to our crews all over the world and last but by no means least to our incredible contributors. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Congratulations. The award for Specialist Factual covers history, natural history, science, the arts, you get the picture, so many brilliant subjects. To announce this year's winner, uh, a brace of presenters who between them pretty much cover quite a lot of that territory. Please welcome a twinkle-toed wildlife filmmaker and a master of interior design. It's Hamza Yassim and Banjo Bay. How are you all doing? Yeah! Good. One thing I love about the BAFTAs is you get to meet some incredible people. Um, and I just want to get my phone out and take selfies. But believe it or not, one person I haven't met is Banjo. <laughs> we live four miles as the crow flies in the west coast of Scotland. I live in Adnamarchen, he lives in Mull. And we've never managed to meet. So Banjo, hello. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Neighbours. <laughs> The three nominations in this category celebrate the work of two outstanding artistic talents. And one explores the mystery from the natural world. Let's take a look. Specialist Factual. Becoming Fida Kahlo. This daughter of the revolution lived an ordinary life, and hers is no easy tale to tell. Frida Kahlo was a rule breaker. The way she broke taboos, the way she broke the norm, was completely revolutionary and transgressive. Imagine Douglas Stewart, love, hope, and grit. To put together the roots and the book and what everything was. I pretty much, I will. The only thing we disagreed with was um, we weren't sure where the actual pit head was. I know. You know, the rest of the book being so real to everybody. I mean, you can tell me, I'll not tell uh, anybody. Yeah, exactly. I'm a sore discretion. Exactly. Taxi drivers are that discreet, oh, definitely, eh? I. <laughs> <laughs> what killed the wheel? We need lots of tissue samples, so it's time for me to get my hands dirty. Put your fingers in there, let uh -huh. me just clear this out. Yeah. Okay, now pull towards you. Jesus. Okay. Andrew's experience tells him that inside this energy rich fat, we will find some crucial forensic information. And the BAFTA Scotland Award goes to... Imagine, Douglas Stewart, Love, Hope and Grit. Thank you very much. This was very unexpected. Uh, it's never just one person, it's always the team. So thank you to Tanya for execing it. Thank you to Ed, who cut it beautifully. Carlo D'Alessandro shot it. Susan made the money stretch as far as it possibly could. <laughs> thank you to kind of Alice and Helen, our EPs. Um, by far, the most articulate person is Douglas and he couldn't be here. He is on a literary cruise across the Atlantic. So, so I did ask him to write something. And what did he say? He said, I'm grateful to them for allowing me to take Alan Yentob around the Barris, an experience that delighted me and dispelled much class stereotyping when he was stopped every five feet by a working class Ouija who wanted to interrogate him and his work on David Hockney and Mick Jagger. And that's true. Alan did love getting recognised at the Barris. <laughs> Um, thank you again for the credible honour. If I'm not remembered for much else, remember me as the man who gave Alan Yentob his very first pineapple cube. So, <laughs> thank you on that. Well, thank you very much. Congratulations. 
The ability to express an idea with precision, speed and economy is a rare gift. So it's time to honour this year's finest work in short film and animation. To reveal the winner, an actress who embodies the tenacious title character of detective series Karen Perry, and an actor known for a discovery of witches. They are both celebrated the world over for their fantastic work on the phenomenon that is Outlander. Please raise the roof for Lauren Lyle and Stephen Cree. <laughs> Hello, hello. I am so thrilled to be here tonight, especially with my best friend, Stephen Cree. Thank you. Uh, okay, so, um, uh, an observation of what we're willing to sacrifice to create a better future, and three woodland creatures play out an archetype human conflict. And we've spent so long trying to be funny we missed the, uh, the description of the very first one which was about the first short film which is just rewinding <laughs> back here uh, and it is a pleasure it is to celebrate the brilliantly clever and it gifted is. people behind this year's nominations wow with a heart-rending exploration <laughs> of addiction yeah. and recovery um, I Thank mean, you. Yeah, well, well. Uh, so, yeah, if that made sense, let's take a look. Short film and animation. Queen. I remember the first time I died. Everything becomes still. The problem is, is that it's so still, your body literally forgets how to breathe. And so it just stops. Three hours later, I was back looking for you. I probably helped with 10,000 years in the larder now. Got fed up, to be honest. A long winter. I'd rather, I'd rather look at the view outside. Why not? Shackle. The BAFTA Scotland Award goes to... A Long Winter. not expect to win so thank you so much <laughs> thank you to BAFTA Scotland and um, we want to say a massive thank you to the Scottish Documentary Institute and Screen Scotland uh, they make independent documentary happen in Scotland and we really appreciate you and this film was funded through Virginia Gap also a massive thank you to Innes McNeil who let us tell his story and to our amazing crew so Finlay producer um, it was easy. <laughs> uh, Kieran Gosney, our amazing editor. Uh, Julian Swanett, DOP, and Tom Drew, composer and sound designer. And we also want to say that, you know, as filmmakers and artists and everyone in this room, you know, we've got a responsibility to elevate the world's most important stories. And we want to take this opportunity tonight to say that we stand in solidarity with Thanks. everyone Thanks. in Palestine. Come on. It's true. Yeah. And it's also difficult to make these films. Yeah. It's difficult. The 
documentary, independent documentary world is impossible. So. Yeah. So we'll put pressure on institutions and our government and <laughs> let's ask for a ceasefire. And everyone, use your voice as filmmakers and artists. And thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. We've reached the award for factual series, which often takes us into the world of crime. Fitting then that to present is the star of international TV, a nominee tonight for her work on Mayflies, now heading up the much-loved Shetland as D.I. Ruth Calder. And she's joined by her partner in solving crime, a former DS promoted, as she keeps insisting to temporary D.I. Alison Tosh McIntosh. Please give a massive welcome to Ashley Jensen and Alison O'Donnell. <laughs> Good evening, Glasgow. So the nominations for factual series are in turn terrifying, shocking, and inspiring. Which is so funny, Ashley, because that is exactly how I would describe working with you. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously the terrifying and shocking bit, clearly. <laughs> Thank you, Alison. Let's take a look at the nominees. Factual series. Many, many of the women who lost their lives, their stories have got lost, their voices have gone unheard. Fred West, the Glasgow Girls. Yeah, how did it happen? How did you get away with it? How does any young lass end up murdered? When no one wants to listen to your story, when no one wants to think that you're a human and that you make mistakes, what can you do? Do you think there's different sides to a story? Different sides to it, yeah. I think there probably is, isn't there? But on this occasion, I'm definitely right. Three mothers, two babies, and a scandal. And they're definitely wrong. The women who changed modern Scotland. It started with women's aid. I mean, because this is all about the women's movement and what women have done for women throughout the world. So Women's Aid in Edinburgh and Glasgow were very much the driving force of what has then gone on to happen all over the world. Yes. Isn't that amazing? That is fantastic. And the BAFTA Scotland Award goes to Three mothers, two babies, and a scandal. Well, this award really goes to the three mothers, uh, three incredible women, uh, Vicky, Judith and Tranda, who trusted us to tell their story when they'd been so badly let down 20 years ago. So to the three of you, I don't know if you'll ever see this, thank you so much. <laughs> it, it means everything to us. I would also like to thank an incredible all-female team at Firecrest Films, only some of whom are here tonight. <laughs> this series uh, and to our amazing commissioners at Amazon, Fozia and Haji, who trusted us to make this film. Uh, the person who's missing here tonight is Alice McMahon Major, the series director. I, I can't really pretend it was an easy series to make. It wasn't. It was very difficult. But during this series, Alice, who started the series single, met the love of her life on Hinge. And <laughs> for a series about motherhood, She's not here because she had a baby last Friday. <laughs> so, Alice.
Chris, you should be here making this speech, but I'm very glad that you found something special in your life. Thank you all very much. <laughs> Gorgeous story, congratulations. Now to the award for entertainment. And is the person here to present a titan of Scottish comedy? Absolutely. See what I did there? Um, it's fine. Uh, in recent times, the nation has fallen in love with his work on the BAFTA Scotland Award winning Scott Squad. Please welcome the chief himself, Jack Doherty. <laughs> Well, I know what it's like to uh, be sitting out there uh, waiting to hear if you've got this award or not. So I'll get to it as quickly as possible, but I'm just going to wait just a moment in case um, BAFTA have got me here tonight to surprise me with the Lifetime Achievement <laughs> Award and uh, honorary membership of the Academy, but I don't... Is there... Next year. Next, next year, next year. Right, so it appears I have been flown up here just to present this award. Okay, um, <laughs> there you go. Um, let's first of all have a look at the nominees in entertainment. Entertainment. Henry VIII is one of the few husbands Johnny Depp can feel superior to. Only England could watch a man abuse six different women and think maybe every school child should learn a rhyme to remember how he did it. Henry also invented modern divorce, and so it's his fault that you're watching this at home, alone and unloved. Frankie Boyle's farewell to the monarchy. There's a lot to get. <laughs> Richard Osman's House of Games. Michael Bublé or Mariah Carey. Oh. Which of those two fulfill both of those criteria? I'm bringing nothing here. OK. OK. But, but, Say at Christmas. When I have a bubble bath, I call it a buble bath at Christmas. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just totally irrelevant information. No, not, I don't think I, so. I think it's the happiest visual image of my day so far. OK, cool. I think... <laughs> I think you've made a lot of people's Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Susan Kalman's grand dear. And I've always wanted... You know when you, you're in a plane and you think, I could just reach out and I could touch the clouds? And that's what I'm doing now. Or I'm in an episode of Stars in Their Eyes. Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Meatloaf. And, uh, OK, the BAFTA Scotland Award goes to Frankie Boyle's farewell to the monarchy. I'm not Frankie Boyle, I'm sorry, uh, nor am I... <laughs> Come on, Callum! <laughs> nor am I Ross Wilson, who really should be here, but told us at the last minute he couldn't come uh, due to health reasons, and we're very much missing him tonight, so... Sorry, Ross. Um, my speech will be much shorter than his would have been, though, so you should all be very grateful. Um, congratulations to Frankie, who... Uh, seemingly managed the impossible, which was marrying very funny comedy with quite important, quite important social commentary and starting a national conversation, which I don't think anyone was really expecting at that time. So well done, Frankie. Um, to the production team as well, who pulled out absolutely all of the stops to kind of cater to our every whim 
and last minute request when the palace shut their not inconsiderable doors in our faces at most um, turns, not uh, perhaps understandably. So thank you to Two Rivers and the production team. Thank you to Frankie and everyone involved. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, Callum. Uh, next up, the category is features, or as I like to think of it, feed my brain. The kind of shows that feed your curiosity and make you feel cosy all at the same time. To reveal the nominees and acclaim the winner, a rising face of children's TV who's expanded her thriving music career by hosting CBBC Saturday Mashup and an up-and-coming actress, soon to be seen on ITV's drama about Cary Grant and his daughter Jennifer. Quite the year for Shireen Kelvin and Ellie McDowell. Good evening, it's a pleasure to be here. Everyone's looking gorgeous. Now, the nominees all show how to make the everyday very special. Three shows with the warmth factor without sacrificing high quality. Let's take a look. Features. Volunteering turned into full-time work for them both and a new life on Mull. Designing the Hebrides. We came here just as little lost backpackers and I'm an interior designer now, Rose, <laughs> cheese maker. It's like, this is home. Kirsty and Phil's love it or list it. Richard, hmm. are you going to love it? Or are you going to list it? Are you going to say? Or are we both going to say? Yeah, yeah. Both of us. Hmm. We've been thinking about love it. it. Oh. <laughs> 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 We're going to love That's it. Yes. The Yorkshire Auction House. The about the money for you is about mm -hmm. finding homes for tennis items, but you've got £44,560. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'm glad I'm sitting down. Seriously. Yeah, you've got over £44,000 to come back. That's after our fees. That's the take home for you. A flipping hell. The moment of truth. Okay. The BAFTA Scotland Award goes to Design in the Herbities. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Um, when we first cast Banjo in Interior Design Masters, I don't think we had no idea what a brilliant designer he was. We also didn't realise what an amazingly charismatic, brilliant person he was. But it was when we went back to him at home on the Isle of Mull that I think we realised there was something really special here. And. Uh, and I'd really like to thank uh, the BBC, Louise and, and Steve and Claire for being so supportive through this. And, and obviously these things are, uh, it's a production team, so led by our brilliant John. You, uh, you can't make uh, a show like Designing the Heavens without a fantastic team, so a huge thank you to uh, producer directors, uh, Katrina Easter and Drew Ferguson and also uh, Gail Colville, uh, Marion McNeil, and our fantastic editor, Sam Pescott-Frost, and Mariana Luck as well. Uh, and I just got to say a big thank you to the people of Mull and Tobermory for letting us into their world, and they stole our heart, and to my little team, Awen, Tom, Lisa, Rowe, and my dog, Grandpa. He's on the call sheet, so I wish he was here tonight. Um, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate it. Bye. <laughs>
Now then, these last few weeks, votes have been pouring in for BAFTA Scotland's Audience Award, the category where the outcome is determined by the most important people in the industry, the viewers. So, to tell us more is a presenter who lights up our afternoons on A Place in the Sun and now our mornings on this morning. It's the well-travelled Jean Johansson. Hi, Edith. Good evening. You all look gorgeous. Right, where are we? After Sam Hewins' well-received win last year, the time has come to announce a new favourite Scot on screen. BAFTA Scotland is delighted to partner with Screen Scotland for the special award where a panel of industry experts have the tough job of reducing a very worthy long list to just six. The audience is voted for this brilliant, these brilliant performers in a wide range of shows from the best drama, entertainment and documentary. So, let's take a look. Audience Award, in partnership with Screen Scotland. Brian Cox, Succession. This is not the end. I'm going to build something better. Something faster, lighter, meaner, wilder. And I'm going to do it from in here, where the you are. You fucking pirates! Oh, Hamza Yassin, Strictly Come Dancing. <laughs> Lauren Lyle, Karen Perry. Why would she hide it? Because she was 15, that's why. Why would you cover up who the father was? Maybe he was 17 and knew the family would press charges. We should be looking into that. I'd like to go to child services. Hang on a second. That way, I can trace the child. These things are sensitive. I can ask her to take a DNA the test. The Duff family would strongly disagree with that, And in that, that way, I, I could say. probably find the father. Hurry! I think it was as close to, like, dreams coming true as you could possibly get. Louis Capaldi, how I'm feeling now. But as soon as your first album does well, it's like, can I do it again though? So there's that tension all the time. Meryl Williams, okay. The Traitors. I've got 800 plays here, which is short stature. I've always been below the heights, so I can never go on it, so I've never been like upside down. Are you okay? Oh my God, oh my God! <laughs> I think a lot of people just draw assumption that I'm basically wrapped up in cotton wool, and I feel like they're quite shocked by, like, oh, she can do that, oh my goodness, I never knew that. I just like to prove people wrong. Oh. Tony Curran, Mayflies. You want to get cheap flights, and I will pay back. I don't want any. No, 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 I'm going to take care of it. I won't have it any other way. I can't tell you how much better I'm feeling. It's like I'm weightless. You should write about us noodles. We knew how we live. Ooh, they're all so good. The BAFTA Scotland Audience Award goes to... Yes, Lauren Lyle. <laughs> I really did not think that was going to happen. <laughs> Brian Cox. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, geez, that's... Well, uh, well, thank you so much. I mean, honestly, 
<laughs> and the audience awards, it's the audience, it's people that have been loyal to shows and that have supported me. I mean, I started out on Outlander and my part was never meant to be that big and the audience response was why it went where it went. So thank you to everyone that voted. It means the world. I feel I'm gonna cry. Um, Karen Perry as well. I mean, a show where I was the sort of face of it and, and we were, came from not very much and it's gone on to do really well and that's all the audience that have been loyal to it and watched it and um, got behind it and um, supported it. So thank you, thank you for everyone that's watched it. I really appreciate it, thank you. Emo, <laughs> just hurry up and write season two, will you? <laughs> It's time now to honour the masters of the keyboard as we've reached the award for writer, film and television. Pipe down. That's not a cute talk. Writers are important people. <laughs> Presenting our two actors who know all about quality scripts, having delivered them in series such as Crime, The Control Room, Malpractice and Six Four. Please give a huge warm welcome to Lauren McFadden and Joanne Vanderham. Good evening. Good. Great scripts are the foundation of outstanding drama. Yes, and the nominees tonight have certainly proved that point this year. Let's take a look. Writer, film, television, in partnership with Screen Scotland. You've got a built-in rest there. <laughs> no danger. I'm right-handed and I'm playing with a kid, right? Go easy. Do you want a break or...? Yeah. Charlotte Wells, After Sun. Good. Well done. So what's your sister's name? Uh, Sophie. Oh, nice. I'm her dad, though, actually. Oh, sorry, mate, I just thought that. Christy Wilson Cairns, The Good Nurse. You know, um, I wouldn't care if you did those things. I mean, I could understand. You could explain. <laughs> Neil Forsyth, the gold. That's very pretty. Be ashamed to make it ugly, won't it? People like us, John, we can only have it if it's ugly. keep you waiting 148 days for a decision. No. The winner goes to... Charlotte Wells After Sun. Thank you, BAFTA Scotland. Ah. <laughs> uh, my uncle gave me some grief the other night about not having prepared a speech yet. Uh, but the truth is, for a long time I've known what I would say if I got a chance to stand up here. So I'm going to try. <laughs> um, it's the end of the journey in a lot of ways for this film. Uh, we've been on the road for a wee while. And uh, I think because this is home, uh, it's been easy to reflect on a lot of the people who got me here. So in 2015, I uh, made my first short film. I was in film school as a producer, not a director. I had no idea what I was doing. And it was a few days before we started shooting. And uh, I was with my friends, my crew. We were prepping, panicking. And uh, my phone rang. I was one of my grandparents. They were on their way to drop something off. Um, so I was expecting them. And I picked up the phone, but I couldn't hear much of anything. And uh, I strained to listen, 
but uh, when I realized that they'd called by mistake, I'm about to hang up, and um, I hear their voices, I catch them, and they're talking about me. <laughs> They're in a shop, so obviously I don't hang up because I'm curious what it is that they have to say. <laughs> and I hear one of them say uh, to the man behind the till, our granddaughter's making a film. <laughs> now, I was out on a limb here. No one in the family really knows anyone who works in this industry. But the pride and conviction with, with, with which they said that, I could have been directing Bond, almost. <laughs> Not my first short film. Uh, and it made it real. I mean, it was real, but it made it feel real. And they made it possible. Like day after day, for weeks, they ran errands, they called in favors, they put up my friends, they cooked food, they got in front of the camera when I asked them to. In the end, not for one film, but for two films. And uh, not once did they ask me why I was doing this. They didn't think twice about helping me in any way um, they possibly could to get this film made. And that, I think, was really obvious to them, but uh, it takes me back every single time uh, I think of it. Uh, so this award is for Aftersun, um, but I wouldn't be here without them. So I thank BAFTA Scotland, um, not just for this beautiful award, but for giving me the chance to thank my grandparents who are here with me tonight for never really, for, uh, for never really listening when, um, for never really listening when I show them how to use their mobile phones, for uh, all their love and support and so much more. So thank you. me that dead. Whoa. Whoa. Hi mum and dad. Um, now to the award for, Joss, that really got me. Whoa. Now to the award for television scripted. To tell us about the nominees, we have two actors who've added to an already distinguished list of screen credits in recent times. One has been solving murders on the mean streets of Aberdeen in Granite City, whilst the other has been serving up memorable Sunday night drama as the long-suffering but phenomenal maitre d' in Boiling Point. Please say hello to Hannah Donaldson and Gary Lamont. Oh, hello. Hi, everyone. Let's go. Gary, the script? What script? It's television scripted. You said you were going to write us something. I'm not writing a script. This isn't a paid position, Hannah. <laughs> it's here. It's a cliche that we're living through a golden age of television drama. And like most cliches, it's kind of true with these three outstanding series. Let's take a look. Television scripted. Tree. Guilt. We need to get out of the airport. We need to get a taxi to Haymarket. We need to get a train out of Edinburgh before Maggie Lynch knows we are here. Tram? What? We can get a tram to Haymarket. We're not getting a tram. It's cheaper than a taxi. Yeah, because it's a tram. Six years soon, eh? Karen Pity. Yeah. I gather you're from Fife, Fury. Methyl, sir. You remember it then? Rosie Duff murder. Would have been all over the news. Oh, I was three, sir. Three, Jesus. Well, at least you'll be up with all the podcasting nonsense then. Yes, sir. Good. Ideally, we would have shut the whole thing down, but we don't have the power. Me, for it. Okay, um, and the award, the BAFTA Scotland Award for Television Scripted goes to Mayflies. <laughs>
take me a while to stop laughing, actually, because um, <laughs> we uh, we got a phone call from Gaynor, Gaynor, and Gavin at the BBC around about I don't know, it was the middle of June or something, 2020. What year is this? 23, 22? No, was it 22? It was 22, yeah. And she said, um, "Oh, I need a, I need, I need something really amazing for uh, for Christmas. I need two one hours." I said, well, I've got three one hours. Well, I can turn it into two. <laughs> and it's absolutely amazing. It's, it's Mayflies by Andy O'Hagan, written by the wonderful Andrea Gibb, and you know that we're going to make it. <laughs> and she said, OK, that's, that's great. But um, can it be, can you deliver it by the 19th of December? <laughs> I said, yes, of course, like every... <laughs> every, uh, uh, you know, sort of producer does. And then, bloody hell, we had to do it, didn't we? But we did it. And uh, here we are. Thank you so much, BAFTA Scotland. Um, we had, we had, we, we literally had one five week period we could shoot this in. We couldn't shoot it any earlier because we didn't have enough time to prep. We couldn't shoot it any later because we didn't have enough time to edit. But we made it. We got it on the telly. It worked. It suit looks like you liked it. And uh, <laughs> we got the amazing Tony Curran, Martin Compson, Ashley Jensen, Tracy Effie Ashore to be our leads. And we're absolutely thrilled. So thank you very much. <laughs> apologise for ushering you off with the music cue there, there. Slightly the hand there. Right now, let's turn uh, our achievements by an actress in film, ladies and gentlemen. What a huge award. Yes. Here to present... They're a bit rowdy, aren't they? Can you hear them out there? Can you hear them? It's brilliant. Yeah, I love it. Oi! Shh, back there. Pipe down. Right, here to present uh, an actor who won a BAFTA Scotland Award for his beautiful performance in the observed comedy Limbo. If you haven't seen that film, you need to see it. It's extraordinary. Uh, recently seen in SES, Rogue Heroes, The Crown, and A Haunting in Venice, and soon to be seen in the second series of Vigil. Please welcome Amir El Masri. <laughs> Hello, thank you very much for having me. Um, before I start, I just want to echo Edith's sentiments earlier and say my heart goes out to all the women, men and children currently suffering right now in Gaza. Let's hope and pray that we see peace in the region and an imminent ceasefire. Now back to this. Now in this category, we have two relatively new up and coming talents and a multi-award winner with a stream of credits. These three memorable performances all deserve our recognition and praise. Let's take a look. Actress, film. Oh my God, he's doing some weird slow motion ninja moves. Why is he so weird sometimes? But yeah, he's good. Frankie Corio, After Sun. All right, tell me why. Mum wants to talk to you. Right. Thanks, Poppet. Right. Lucy Halliday, Blue Jean. What is wrong with you? Uh, that's enough, Lois. I'm afraid I'm going to have to call your father. <laughs> Don't bother. Uh, sit back down, please. You know, you haven't even asked me what happened. You've asked all of them, but not me. Have you got something to say? You're the worst of the lot, and you know it. Do you know who William Shakespeare is? Sally Hawkins, <laughs> The Lost King. A celebrated writer, and everyone thinks he's amazing, and he wrote a play about you. And there's this bit where you're supposedly talking about yourself. Go on. So lame and unfashionable that dogs bark at me as I hug by them. 
You're so weird that you even freak out, Doc. It's a bit on. The BAFTA Scotland Award goes to Lucy Halliday, Blue Jean. a plethora of humans who deserve far more credit for this film than I do but before I start like listing them I do want to say that like in terms of like first jobs I think this might be as good as it could ever possibly get <laughs> <laughs> um, and that for me as a teenager specifically as a teenage girl getting to work on a film that was solely led and powered by a team of really cool women was formative to me in ways I don't think I even know yet. Um, and now the names of some of them. So uh, Georgia Oakley, our writer, director, who g had more patience than a hospital for me. Like, she was wonderful and took time out of every day to explain everything. She told me what a camera was, I didn't even know. Um, <laughs> Shaheen Baig, who cast this film, who gave me this shot. Um, I'm still kind of unsure how I ended up in a film. It wasn't something I had on the cards. I was a teenager in Paisley. Shaheen was Shaheen, yet somehow our worlds overlapped. Um, uh, Helen Marielena, who produced the heck out of it, thumbs up. Um, <laughs> e Eva Yates for BBC Film, who gave me the first introduction to the industry in Scotland, uh, who, which meant more to me than I could ever possibly say. Um, my mom. For, she gave me like vegetables and like cowpaw and like that's really great. <laughs> um, also, um, um, this film wasn't an individual biopic, but it was based on a couple of people's real life stories who shared their lives with us. Sarah and Catherine, thank you for doing that. Um, lastly, before I go, and I promise I will go. Um, <laughs> Fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I hope people take from this film, regardless of whether you've seen it or not, I mean, don't get me wrong, totally go watch it, but even if you haven't, um, that, that, that queer people, specifically queer young people, from my point in this film, they're not like Tinkerbell. You can't just say you don't believe in them and expect them to start dropping off the face of existence. That's not how it works. It's not how it's ever worked. It's not how it's going to work. <laughs> And whether it be about someone's sexuality or any other facet of their being, no amount of hating someone or shaming someone or being truly unkind will ever create better people or kinder people or happier people. And our film showed that with blazing apparentness. Um, thank you so much for letting me be a small part of your night. You all look lovely. Uh, thanks. <laughs> Any mums in the room? Vegetables and cow pole, that's all you need. What a speech, that was phenomenal. Right, listen, we are more than halfway through. Just focus, we can do this. We can get this done before the Scotland game kicks off. And oh, poor wee thing. Erling Haaland, can he play? Oh, hey! Nice work, Fairy Wiles. Right then, our next award honours the year's most outstanding work by an actor in a film. To tell us who joins a list of previous winners, which includes, thank you, the likes of Jack Loudon, Peter Mullen, James McAvoy. It is a pleasure to welcome BAFTA Scotland actress in film winner from just last year for the brilliant Boiling Point, Team Boiling Point, yes. Please put your hands together and welcome Izuka Hall! Hello. It's an honor to return to BAFTA Scotland Awards to salute three very fine actors. 
here's a quick look at the performances that earned them the nomination tonight. Actor, film, Chinaza Uchi, a good you person. Your sister were much better behaved than Rai. What? Come on, speak your mind, son. We were good because we were terrified of you. So, I'm not surprised you don't have any tools in your arsenal since you lost the only one that you had. Fear. James Cosmo. My sailor, my love. Is this because of her? Does she not want me here? You hold it right there. You are welcome to visit as often as you like, but you contact me first. Do you hear what you're saying? Would you keep your voice down. The girls are in bed. They're not your girls, Dad. I'm your girl. Great. <laughs> Old mess, girl. After some. And the BAFTA Scotland Award goes to Paul Meskell. I'm obviously not Paul Meskell. I can't imagine anyone, I mean, yeah, how disappointing not to be Paul Meskell at any given moment. <laughs> of the day. Um, Paul would have loved to have been here tonight, of course. Um, he's using this brief window after the strikes to promote recent work, including All of Us Strangers, in which he's absolutely incredible. Um, in the event that he won, which he did, uh, he asked me to read the following. Reluctantly, I do. Uh, what an honor. Thank you so much, BAFTA Scotland. For this film to still be recognized a year after it was released here in the UK is testament to my insanely talented friend Charlotte Wells, who I'm sure is finding this <laughs> awkward to read out in front of you all. No kidding, Paul. Uh, I love you, Charlotte. Sorry I can't be with you all to celebrate. Playing Callum was an immense privilege, and I will remain forever grateful for this opportunity. I've said this many times, but Frankie Cario... <laughs> it was a joy to be your father. It's very strange reading this. It's a joy to be your father for two months, a role I will never forget. Thank you again, BAFTA Scotland. I hope you have a great night. Thank you, BAFTA, for embracing this Irishman as an on-screen and honorary Scot. Yeah. So, we've reached the evening's first award in the gift of BAFTA Scotland. It honours an outstanding contribution to craft. And to name and acclaim this year's honoree, I am delighted to welcome a distinguished previous recipient of the same award. Recently, you may have seen him listed on the credits for the latest Mission Impossible film, and surely the only thing more impressive than his credits on countless huge movies, including Star Wars, um, is his contact book, for which I would happily trade a kidney. Um, please welcome the amazing Tommy Gormley. Thank you, Diff. Good evening, all. Shh. This is important. Shh. Listen up. It is my absolute honour to be presenting the Outstanding Contribution to Craft Award to Production Sound Mister. Mixer, Stuart Wilson. <laughs> Stuart's world of sound mixing is a world where folks usually have to be quiet. We're all told to be quiet all the time in film sets, usually by someone like me. Stuart is that very quiet guy in the corner, surrounded by banks of equipment that no one's really got a clue quite what they do. And it's a hidden world where folks like Stuart never blow their own trumpet, 
So we must blow it for him and blow it we shall. <laughs> now, whenever I've worked all over the world on endless films, there's usually a Scottish person in the crew. I kind of make sure there is somehow. And it's really great when there's a Scottish person in the crew. It's even better when the Scottish person in the crew is the boss, the head of the department, a much beloved boss person. <laughs> but what trumps all of it is when that person is, without any qualifications or explanation or excuses, truly actually the best in the world at that job. That is something truly special. Stuart Wilson is that person. To say his CV is stellar is to shortchange it. This is the man you can listen to, the sound on all the films that, from Batman to James Bond, Harry Potter to Indiana Jones, from 1917 to Star Wars. He even has a BAFTA and an Oscar, I think, as well, and for good reason. <laughs> Stuart possesses that uh, rare quality of being peerless at his job and being an incredibly lovely human being. He's kind, thoughtful, generous, wise, and just a great person to have on a film set. On a film set, some mornings you roll up and you're having your rolling bacon, whatever you're having, and you see a guy like Stuart, you think, today's gonna be okay because you're here. It's a really special feeling. I think that of all the films I've done, the two Star Wars films with Stuart, I was in awe of his ability and his skill set. I mean, I've stood from the burning deserts of Jordan with Stuart to the frozen wastelands of a Pinewood backlot with Stuart literally with his hand up the back of C-3PO trying to get uh, Anthony Daniels' dialogues done. And he does it with great skill and great aplomb every time. And we uh, should all be, what he does also, it's not sound recording, it's sound mixing. So at that moment, Stuart is mixing the sound from the various mics, from the boom, from the radio mics, the passing overhead planes. He is mixing it on the fly there and then. It's an incredibly skillful job. And what he does, he's beloved by editors and post-production because he captures that magic at a time in the little bottle. And whatever they can do in post-production, nothing quite matches what is done on the day. I'm sure the actors and directors in the room would agree with that. It's a really special and magical skill that he possesses. We should be very proud as Scots people that we have amongst our midst. He's one of us, literally the greatest person in the business as one of our gang. He is a wonderful, wonderful human being. He is the world's greatest sound recordist. And it's such an honor to be here tonight to say to him, Stuart, you are truly the greatest, but let's watch some of his work. Watch and wonder. Outstanding contribution to craft in memory of Robert McCann. Chewie, we're home. Bond. James Bond. If you are a director and you're looking for collaborators, you have to hope that somebody like Stuart Wilson walks through your door. I cannot think of somebody more conscientious, more prepared, more intuitive, sweeter natured, more dedicated. We did Empire of Light. What the hell are you doing? Telling the truth. What a novel idea. We had to stop him working out a scheme to feed the seagulls further down the front with fish and chips every night so that they wouldn't disturb the sound around where we were shooting. There's no point walking out. There's every fucking point. Just one of the reasons why making films which is, as everybody knows, a collaboration from top to bottom, is so wonderful for people like myself, is that you get to meet and work with people like Stuart. I met Stuart when I was a wee bairn of 21. This is a Millennium Falcon. You're Han Solo. 
I used to be. What I learned about Stuart is that he is exactly the same on a film set as he is at the Oscars when he's been nominated. <laughs> Calm, considerate, lovely, kind, quick to laugh. <laughs> and an immense talent who is supremely deserving of this honor. The trouble with writing a book about yourself is you can't fool around. Why not? People fool around with themselves all the time. I've been lucky enough to work with Stuart all over the world, from Manchester to Kabul. He's an exceptional technician and an exceptional human being. I'm very proud to call him my friend. <laughs> Stuart always stays very calm. We were filming in the desert in the south of Iran, where the drug smugglers have bigger guns than the police. We were filming explosions around the convoy. It was all very stressful. But when I turned around to look for Stuart, he was doing yoga on the top of a pickup truck. Martin! What are you doing? <coughs> Recording. Stuart is very modest. He'll start telling you a story about this wee film that he worked on, and his daughter Ava will have to interrupt him and say, Dad, it was Batman. The hell are you supposed to be? I first worked with Stuart on the fifth Harry Potter film. And I remember thinking, why is this guy so obsessed with getting perfect sound? And then since then, I've been lucky enough to produce uh, several films with Stuart. Let's finish this the way we started. Together! And I cannot tell you how grateful I am for the fact that Stuart Wilson is so obsessed with getting great sound. I've always wanted to use that spell. Stuart is one of the kindest, uh, gentlest people um, just such a pleasure to have on the set, to be a part of our crew. And I truly hope we get many, many more projects together again. You showed me all it takes is fear and a little focused violence. You inspired me. Out of your goddamn mind. I do hope that wasn't for me. <laughs> but that is. Good evening, Stuart, and congratulations on receiving your outstanding contribution to Craft. We're very happy for you. I made my own choices. Hmm. You think you did. That's her genius. Congratulations, Stuart. You are the loveliest and the quietest sound man we've ever had the pleasure of working with. Good luck out there in the field. Stuart, hey, it's JJ, uh, just saying congratulations on this BAFTA Scotland Award. Uh, you are one of the most excellent people uh, I've ever had the honor of working with, and I, I cannot thank you enough for, uh, for all you've done. Did you just call me Solo? Sorry, hot, huh, Professor Solo. You should know, I'm a big deal in the resistance. Uh, you are a brilliant and kind and, and excellent human uh, and, and well-deserved. Uh, I wish I could be there in person, but uh, I wasn't invited, let's be honest. Um, but congratulations. We need more wire cutters! You belong in there. Be nice, people. I think Stuart is probably the best sound recordist in the world. And a nicer man you couldn't wish to meet. He's such a bunch of hunk. Stuart, congratulations. You so deserve this. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Age before beauty. Wish we could be with you tonight. Send you all our love. Have a good evening. Did call you an exemplar of British fortitude. I hope it was all right. It's my great honor to be able to say congratulations, Stuart. You've earned this, you deserve it. 
and I send lots and lots of love, and I can't wait to see you soon. So, ladies and gents, please be upstanding, I think, to pay tribute to the world's greatest sound mixer, Mr. Stuart Wilson. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you. Um, wow. Um, so, um, Stuart Wilson couldn't be here tonight, but he's asked me to read this out. Um, 1985 was the year that I dropped out of college and left Glasgow with a bunch of friends to try and set up a commune. <laughs> it's true. It was Jason, Andy, Chris, Paul Welsh, and several others. We clubbed together and managed to buy a second-hand bus, which rather uncoolly had Glasgow Christian Fellowship painted on the side. <laughs> and with the bin filled, the boot luggage was filled with uh, musical instruments on higher purchase, and the luggage racks were full of skateboards and surfboards. And we set off in search of a place where we could write songs, surf, and live in perfect harmony. To cut a long story short, we were unemployed, unwashed, and nobody would rent us a house. <laughs> so after a few months on the road, the plan fell apart. And I found myself alone, sleeping in the bus, in a field in Devon that I shared with a horse, three cows, and a flock of sheep. <laughs> Where would I go from here? I had a lot of time to think. What was I interested in? I thought, well, I've always been interested in sound and in listening, from recording my seventh birthday party on cassette to drawing pictures of the music that I listened to. Then, age 13, I skipped off school to go to the Odeon in Renfield Street here to see Apocalypse Now, and my, my mind was blown. So in that field in Devon, Looking up at the stars through the skylight, I decided I want to work with sound for films. I sold the Christian Fellowship bus to the farmer who turned my erstwhile home into a goat shed and I came back to Glasgow. Offloaded the instruments back to the shop and got hold of a phone directory. Now, I didn't, there was nobody in my family or friends who had any connections with the business. So I went knocking on doors, Antonine Films, Paddy Higson, Cormorant, Willie Wands, Ian Smith, and many others, and I left my number. I still didn't really know what was involved in doing sound for films, but I wanted to find out. So I joined the Glasgow Film and Video Workshop to meet other enthusiasts and just make stuff together. Um, I got on a couple of unpaid student films and just kept at it until eventually I was lucky enough to be one of three people taken onto a scheme by the Scottish, run by the Scottish Film Training Trust. Now they had arranged attachments to professional productions for a whole year and then at the end of the year the three of us we got to make our own short film which was shown in the Edinburgh Film Festival. This was a brilliant way of showing us that having a film in a festival was not an unattainable goal. Now, there was no film school in Scotland at the time, <coughs> so I moved south to attend the National Film and Television School, which had been set up by visionary Scott Colin Young. In my first year there, I was working on six different films at the same time, sleeping on the cutting room floor and loving it. <laughs> this was it. I had definitely found my thing. Even today, working on set still feels like a privilege, like sitting in the front row of the theatre. And no shot is the same twice. Each performance is a one-off, and I get a real buzz from reacting to the actors and capturing their performance in a way that best helps tell the story. 
when we've done our prep, everything in the frame looks right, the acoustics are sorted, the shot's in focus, the actor hits their mark and they deliver that immortal line, the hairs still stand up on the back of my neck. M making a film is a microcosm of life. I think the, the, the relationships, the innovation, the creativity, the anxiety, the negotiations, the intense emotional ups and downs. And it's taken me across five continents and introduced me to talented people from all over the world. People coming together to make something which is far more than the sum of the individual parts, far greater than we could ever do on our own. But it all started here in Glasgow. And I couldn't be more proud than receiving this in my hometown. There, <clears throat> there are literally hundreds of people who've helped me on this journey. There's too many to list here. And I've been fortunate to have the support of some wonderful teammates, including my own family, some of whom are here tonight. I could not have done it without them. I want to thank BAFTA for this remarkable honor. But most of all, I'd like to thank Jason, Andy, Chris, and Paul for abandoning me <laughs> in that field in Devon, because without them, I might not be here today. <laughs>
the BAFTA Scotland Award goes to John McLeod, my own school. Um, clearly, the acad this academy are not unlike Bears Den Academy. They'll let any old bugger in. Uh, I want to, I've got so many people to thank, right? I'm going to rattle through them. Uh, Bernie McGarton, my editor, who's the other half of my brain. Everyone at Blazing Griffin. George Geddes and all the, all the crew. Shelley Poole, who did my music um, and is just the, my most beautiful friend and, and so talented. Everyone at Wild Child Animation for putting up with me. That's Rory Lowe and Martha McDermott. Uh, Mark Thomas at, at Screen Scotland. Dave Harron at BBC Scotland. Mark Bell, who were just on board from the beginning. Um, uh, everyone at Hopscotch. John Archer, Mary Valentine, David Brown is here somewhere. Um, my producer, Olivia Lichtenstein, who made me a filmmaker in the first place and then told me this was the film that I had to make. Um, I want to thank my sister for getting such a doing at Claybank High that we got transferred to Bearsden Academy. Um, I want to thank my mom and dad, who didn't do anything as much as Charlotte's grandparents, but they kept some papers in the loft. Uh, <laughs> I want to thank my incredible husband, right? We share an office at home and we've got matching shelves. And on his shelves, he keeps his like 47 BAFTAs. <laughs> and on my shelves, I keep all my He-Man figures. So <laughs> uh, Skeletor is going to have to budge up. Uh, <laughs> Alan Cumming, who uh, the film exists because of Alan. He trusted in me, he believed in me. He's the most wonderful actor and human friend. Um, I want to thank Lulu because I'm thanking Lulu in my BAFTA speech. <laughs> which is my little gay boy dream come true. Um, I, uh, I, I know that this award um, isn't really for me. It's for my classmates um, who are the real stars of the film. There's the voice cast as well. I'm going to shout them out. Claire Grogan, Gary LeBon, Don Steele, Michelle Gallagher, everyone. But the real stars of the film are my classmates. Um, and two of them who are really important are here tonight, and that's Nicola Walker and Gregor Kyle. Whenever I, whenever I had a meltdown, they were there. Um, so thank you to them, but I, there's, uh, I can also say that all the other classmates are coming to the after party. So if you thought the Brandon Lee scandal was a big scandal, more is coming. Just wait and see what they do. Um, thank you very much, that's so special. Yeah. Thank Streets. I can almost smell my dinner, but we're not there quite yet. We must press on with the award for Director Fiction, presented by an actor always in demand across comedy and drama from It's a Sin to Screw and a BAFTA Scotland Award winner who appeared in the biggest film on the planet, our very own Scottish Barbie. It's David Carlyle and Sharon Rooney! <laughs> Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. That's the closest I'm getting to having a full head of hair and a six pack. Me too. <laughs> the work of the nominees covers love, death, and of course, the intrigue surrounding the birth of an internationally popular computer game. Well, there we go. All human life is here. Let's take a wee look at the nominees. Director, fiction. Exactly, ask you when I phone you at home. Oh, yeah, right. Things have been better. Charlotte Wells, after Sun. Why don't you go over and introduce yourself? Dad, no, they're like kids. Mm hmm. Why don't you go over and introduce yourself? Sophie, they're like old. <laughs> Gareth Brynn, Karen Perry. I thought, what would I never do? 
John S. Baird, Tetris. <laughs> Charlotte Wells, after some. Hello, again. Um, I've already somewhat embarrassingly admitted to having spent a long time thinking about what I'd say if I ever got a chance to give one of uh, these speeches. <laughs> I certainly didn't have the audacity to think I would um, give another. Uh, so thank you again, BAFTA Scotland. I mean, writer, director, these are individual awards, but film is not an individual craft or art. Uh, this film was made thanks to the prodigious talents of a great many people. Um, I want to thank the BBC, the BFI, Screen Scotland, and Tango for their support right from day one. Lizzie Frank is here tonight. Kieran Hannigan's here tonight. Isabel Davis is here tonight. Thank you so much um, for believing in this film when uh, it was nothing more than words on a page, kind of weird words at that. Um, the greatest joy in directing is working with actors. I think Frankie might have stepped out, but Frankie um, taught me so much in the making of this film. Uh, she, I met her uh, almost three years ago in Glasgow when we first auditioned her, and she came in and just surprised us all in such an immense way. I was expecting to find a kid who could kind of be themselves on screen and instead I found an actor and that was very unexpected in someone of her age. Um, and I love, I love her. So I'm excited that she's here tonight. Amy Jackson is also here tonight. Amy who might like having her picture taken the least of everyone I know, including me, and that is saying something. Um, but Amy will do anything for anyone at any time of day and I want you to know how grateful I am and have been and always will be for everything you've done for the film. Maybe we got the band back together. Um, I, uh, you guys are, uh, uh, have a big night coming up um, at the Big Screen Awards next week, and I hope you clean up because what you do in this industry is so important. Having you guys uh, represent independent films and release the films you do is so important. So thank you very, very much. Uh, one final shout out uh, to my friend Ollie Conway who designed this beautiful award. Thank you. The next category celebrates the very, very best work by an actor in television. Oh yes! There they are. Tonight's winner joins the club with David Tennant, Dougie Henshaw, Shuti Gatwa, amongst many others, to present one of our very brightest talents, seen most recently, uh, making sense of some murky goings on in the intriguing ITV thriller series, Payback. Please welcome the fabulous Morven Christie. Hello. Hi everyone. It's a long time since I've been in a room full of peers and professionals like this, and it's a real honor to see all your lovely faces. So I'm glad I got out of my pajamas and put down Mario Kart and came to see you. Um, we have four extraordinary performances from actors on television this year. Some you will know better than others, but they are all extraordinary. Let's have a look at their work. Actor, television. Jesus. Brian Cox, Succession. You're such fucking dopes. You are not serious figures. I love you, but you are not serious people. Can you see how far you can take this wee bit of buzz you've got? Hey, well, hmm. Hmm. Tell you what. What? Why don't you take your crowdfunding money? Uh-huh. 
and didn't want to do. Because maybe what I'm more than likely is Gorby as a look. Oh. Connor McCarran, uh, dog days. I can't understand any of this. I don't need to see the man who did this to me. Lewis Gribben, somewhere there. What, you just want to take a look at the guy? Uh, and then we can go home? Yes. All right. Okay, come on. I'll take you. Tony Curran, Mayflies. You can name the happiest I've ever been. You changed me. Made me the person I always wanted to be. Now I've had a good life. See, they're amazing. And the Back to Scotland Award goes to Lewis Gribben for Somewhere for Us. I just crapped myself, man. I was just so happy when Lucy Halliday won, man. She's sick, I was so happy. We both of us were messaging each other like, nah, we're not gonna win, we're not gonna win, we're not gonna win. So when she won, I was like, yes, that's it enough, that's enough for me, she's super talented. So I was like, that's enough for me, her winning. I never thought in a million years that I'd be up here, man. Um, I wanna thank the whole of Clark and Well Films, Gavin O'Grady, uh, Emily Harrison, uh, Petra Fried, uh, Samuel Bottomley, he's an amazing actor, goes to um, How to Have Sex, a brilliant actor, he's so sick. Um, just to like, yeah, to my mum and dad, I have to thank them because I get mad if I don't thank them. Um, they're brilliant, my mum really encouraged me to become an actor and she just got me where I am today so I wouldn't be here without my mum. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, and this, this is dedicated to all the outsiders, to anyone who feels like an outsider and doesn't feel like they belong. I'm a, I'm a boy with autism, like I would never thought I'd be here, man. I never thought I'd become an actor. And um, and if you believe it, you can achieve it. You don't have, you know what, it doesn't matter if you're like the, like the young one who doesn't have as much experience. If you work hard and you're dedicated, you can easily win, like I did, hopefully. <laughs> and thanks to my agents as well. Thank you. Yes, Lewis! Well done, my darling. Thank you. Well done, darling. Amazing. Right. Oh, that was amazing, wasn't it? Oh, right then. Appropriately enough, we turn now to the award for Actress Television. I am delighted to announce it will be presented by one of Scotland's leading ladies, honoured here last year, uh, actor, sorry, for his unforgettable performance in Irvin Welsh's Crime, but who, well, should mostly be celebrated as he is a fellow Pfeiffer, everybody. Oh, yeah. Pfeiffer life! Um, please welcome the brilliant Dougree Scott! Thank you very much. I can be a girl if you want me to be. No problem. Um, very nice to be here in Glasgow. Love this place. To continue BAFTA Scotland's acknowledgement of the wealth of acting talent on television, we have four incredible actresses giving impressive performances while making each role your own, their own. Let's have a look at their performances. Actress, television. Ashley Jensen, Mayflies. Very tiny. 
Why did he ask me? Why didn't he ask me? Because he knew you'd say no. He knows it's against everything that you believe in. How could he ask you? It would be an insult. Yeah, well, that clinic should have told me. I'm his wife. I've got to say, I'm never going to get over this. Is the Cahoyo big boys? No, nope. no, I'm not doing that. Right, this is what we are going to do. You and I, we are going to bash this bitch out until it's done. Jack, may you please run to town and get me a Big Mac with no gherkins and strawberry milkshake? And can you also get a four pack of Red Bulls because we are pulling an all nighter until this is fucking done? Do you understand me? Do you understand me? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> you alright? Yep, fine. Password? No word with you. You all right, Sergeant? Lauren Lyle, Karen Perry. Chief Superintendent, James Lawson. I am arresting you under Section 1 of the Criminal Justice Scotland Act 2016. What are you doing, Perry? For the murder of Rosie Duff. This is ridiculous. Finette Robinson, 64. What about what you did to me? What about that? Was What was that? Was that the good guy, huh? I wish I could change it. Yeah, well, you can't change it. You betrayed me, and you betrayed Olivia. I mean, why don't you just tell me? Oh, God. Amazing. And the winner is... BAFTA Scotland Award goes to Lauren Lyle. <laughs> My God, that is mad. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, to all the other women, Vinette, Ashley, Azuka, thank you so much for being so wonderful in such a cool category. You're all amazing. So I really didn't expect this. Um, Karen Perry is a story of an underestimated woman in a world where if she could just have everyone else leave her alone and give her a break, she could get something done. And it's something I've always sort of... Um, I guess affiliated with. So I want to thank World Productions, Emer Kenny, I share this with you, our writer. Um, you should be up here as well. Thank you for letting me and you do it together and giving me creative control and, and thoughts and feelings. Gareth as well, thanks for trusting me, or Gareth Brin, our director. Thank you. Um, our whole World Productions team, thank you so much for taking a risk on someone that you weren't sure if they could do it. Um, Danny Jackson, Colleen Crawford, all of you, thank you for giving me so much. Um, to be in Glasgow, it's my hometown. To like, do a full circle and be here feels unreal. I can't believe it. Um, getting emotional. Um, my mum and dad, oh my God. <laughs> They're here. <laughs> uh, I love you, thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. I'm thrilled. Cheers. <laughs> she's still got the bum bag for season two please um, I can't wait for that right we've arrived at the award for this year's most outstanding feature film to present the front man who should have been here last year to collect the BAFTA Scotland Award for uh, the entertainment for documentary Biffy Clyro celebration of endings unfortunately he caught the COVID and his bandmates had to celebrate without him Last year, he also received an honorary degree from Glasgow Caledonian University for his continued inspiration to all creatives the world over. Vocalist, guitarist, songwriter, record producer and filmmaker, please put your hands together for the wonderful Simon Neal! <laughs> everybody. I hope you're all fucking magic. It's, uh, it's an honour to be here amongst 
to celebrate so much incredible Scottish talent. And it's fantastic to see three such original and ambitious films coming out of Scotland this year. So let's take a look and see what makes them so special. Feature film. After Sun. I think it's nice that we share the same sky. What do you mean? Well, like, sometimes at playtime, I look up to the sky, and if I can see the sun, then I think about the fact that we can both see the sun, so even though we're not actually in the same place and we're not actually together, we kind of are in a way. My old school. Eh, uh, it's a wally, miss. Everybody's attention just turned to Brandon. Of course, ten out of ten times, he always knew. He always knew the answer. Well, miss, your finger's on the bulba urethral gland. It's otherwise known as Cowper's gland, after the anatomist William Cowper. Oh, so I remember she said sometimes Brandon teaches me biology. When And the uh, BAFTA Scotland Award goes to winners. <laughs> Sorry, my heart is beating. Uh, thank you, Scotland. Thank you, BAFTA. Um, uh, I, as a refugee in this country, uh, I arrived, actually, Glasgow was the first city I arrived. And I, I never thought um, I, I could reach this stage such a BAFTA. And I always thought it was impossible to do that. And today, BAFTA proved it nothing, nothing impossible in Glasgow. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. And I would like to thank my team in Iran and, and also Nadira who invested in the film and also Paul bringing more money in the film. And uh, so everyone is screaming Scotland, thank you very much uh, for recognizing our work and letting me to bring my culture from Iran and combining with the British vision and, and creating winners. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, as Hassan said, I would, I would love to thank our Iranian cast and crew, uh, Scottish uh, post-production team. Uh, massive thanks to Screen Scotland. Without your support, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have been here. Um, thank you. And um, thanks to, to voters, BAFTA voters, and thanks to juries. Thank you, Hassan. Thanks, uh, Paul. Thanks, everybody. Uh, our film is about two, two children from Afghan refugee communities in Iran. That reminds us, children, uh, whoever they are, they deserve love and protection. Thank you for choosing us. I, I don't want to add too much to that, just to say that this is, uh, I think, 25 years for me since my first Bath to Scotland Awards and I still feel like we're not making enough feature films in Scotland. I still think there's a lot of people in this room that we could all come together and make more films and give more opportunities to really diverse and interesting voices. Um, it's, 
It's, it's not all about external validation, it's also about confidence, and we should have the confidence to be doing that, and we should be, have, have the confidence to, to do it more and more often. Uh, so it's kind of up to us to go on with it, really. So cheers. <laughs> For the big one, tonight's final award, and it honours an outstanding contribution to film and television. In recent times, BAFTA Scotland has recognised Peter Capaldi, Stanley Baxter, Lorraine Kelly, amongst others. Uh, I'm not breaking any state secrets by saying that one of our most admired actresses will be joining their ranks. And here, to lead the salute to her remarkable career, is an award-winning director who's worked with the likes of the great Martin Scorsese, Danny Boyle, James McAvoy, and of course, our recipient this evening. Please welcome the wonderful Aberdeenshire's very own John S. Baird. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I wrote this on my phone, so this might go terribly wrong, and you will understand why I am behind the camera and not in front of it. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I want to start by uh, congratulation, uh, congratulating all of the nominees uh, this evening. Uh, there is an incredible array of talent in this room, and uh, it's so encouraging for our industry and also for our country. Um, it is, it is an, when I look around here, it is the best of the best. So congratulations to you all for being here. <clears throat> um, this year's recipi recipient of the BAFTA Scotland Award for Outstanding Contribution to Film and Television is one of the world's most versatile actresses. Um, over the years, Shirley Henderson has continued to amaze us with her unique talent across a variety of genres in both film and TV. When I was asked to present this award to her, it really was the quickest email reply I have ever done. It was such an honor. Um, it is such an honor to be standing here tonight because I'm lucky enough to regard her not only as a valued collaborator, but also as a true friend. I've had the pleasure of directing Shirley in two feature films and I can absolutely confirm she is as delightful to work with as she is to marvel at on screen. The range of her work is truly exceptional and she's the absolute definition of multi-talented with an amazing grasp of so many accents ranging from American to Northern English and from RP to her native Scots tongue. She's one of the most talented performers of her generation, having played such diverse roles as Morning Myrtle in Harry Potter, to Gail in Trainspotting, from Jude in Bridget Jones, to Lucille Hardy in Stan and Ollie. Some of you may recognize her as the sweet voice of the Gruffalo's Child, while others may remember her as the insatiable Bunty Blades from Filth. <laughs> I certainly remember her, yeah. Um, Whichever it is, she definitely, she definitely always leaves you with something memorable. Shirley has also worked with an incredible amount of first-class directors, including Danny Boyle, Mike Lee, Michael Winterbottom, Shane Meadows, Sofia Coppola, J.J. Abrahams, Mike Newell, and Chris Columbus. That's not a coincidence. These guys do not hire people unless they're at the top of our game and she has always been at the top of her game. But not only does she command such respect because of the quality of her work, she's universally lauded for her professional manner, 
positive attitude and the lowest levels of maintenance I have ever experienced <laughs> in such a talented individual. And that is absolutely 100% true. <clears throat> Before we ask her to come up on stage, please let's have a look at some of our most memorable work. Outstanding contribution to film and television. He's one of our volunteers. Well, you've just got yourself two more volunteers. What do you want, Papa? Marry my dear. trailer she insists upon having. Couldn't fit it on the lot. Personal gym, everything has to be white. Her close-ups before anyone else's. Temper tantrum if her macrobiotic cleansing juice isn't delivered on time. A shop! Let's all throw books at Myrtle because she can't see it. Ten points if you get it through her stomach. Fifty points if it goes through her head. Of course I'm lying. Everyone knows that Shirley is one of the most conscientious talented, kindest, hardest working, humblest actors I've ever had the good fortune to work with. You're always so worried about other people. Like someone else, I know. Look. She's always such a generous member of the team, who, when I directed my first film, Bridget Jones' Diary, was so patient and supportive. Right. No pressure, Bridge, but your whole future happiness now depends on how you behave on this one social occasion. Right. What should I do? First, look gorgeous. And totally went along with the illusion that I actually knew what I was doing. Thanks, Sha. Two, then totally ignore Daniel and suck up to famous authors. She's a diminutive force of natural talent. She always brings lots of choices to set, always surprises you in a good way. She can make you laugh out loud and break your heart, sometimes all at once. Yes, he's clearly the most dreadful cold fish. I loved her in Hamish Macbeth and train spotting. Failure on your part to live up to these very reasonable expectations will result in swift resumption of a non sex situation. Oh, by the way, I was wondering, um, you gone to the Cayley? Well, I was supposed to be in it. Why? Well, could you look after a wee jog? Because I'm going fishing. Of course, Hamish. No trouble. Not at all. Working with Shirley Henderson was first and foremost great. Right. Hello, Bonte. He's trying to hide on me. I've had just about enough of you. But uh, it's also intimidating. She makes you raise your game when she comes on set. Feels like she can see right through all your shit. You're I don't want to play darts with her. She's pretty good at darts. I don't know why you bother with him. He's weak. <laughs> Not like you. No, no, no. He's, he's one of the best, I say. That's what I say. He's one of the best. <laughs> oh, I wish I had a friend who was as loyal as you. Shirley's a fantastic actor and a wonderful person. I first had a chance to work with her a long time ago on a film called Wonderland. When's the last time you had sex in? No. But months, for sake, Molly. She's got a great range as an actor, but you always totally believe that she is that person. She really inhabits the part. You never see her acting. Pardon? Jeans. What do you mean I'm not a regular shape? You've got big hips. <laughs> I've not got big hips. Yeah, you have. I haven't. Look, you've got huge That's hips for a I've not got... Lindsay, I've not got big hips. Don't say big that. Hips for me, That's fucking bullshit. I've not got big hips. And Oster, she's fantastic, so easy to work with, so generous to other actors. She always makes the other actors' performance better because she's so good. We did one film up here in Norfolk where Shirley was playing the mum of four little children. Got a holiday? Yeah. Like Crimer? Where? Crimer? Well, I was thinking about like... Or Wells Beach? Mm. Like oh, Scotland. Yeah. Somewhere sunny. We filmed it over five years, and twice a year for five years, Shirley would come up and sort of move into the house of the four kids. 
and be their mom. What are you doing? I told you to stay in the park. It's a boy. Where are the others? In the park. What are you doing here on your own? Oh, come on. Come on. She was amazing. She got great promises from the kids. It was a really fantastic experience working with her. You taking drugs, Ian? Is it for yourself? I'm taking fucking drugs. Fucking dope. Is everything in here? I don't need it myself. Well, just stand up for yourself, Ian. They made me bring it in, Karen. There's nothing I could do. You've just got to fucking believe me. The name's her. The name. The name. Just Magistus. Just Magistus. You're a leaky vessel. Susanna, can you carry it the length of the corridor without spilling? Just Magistus. Just Magistus. Tristan. Tristan Gistus. Tristan. Tristan Gistus. Don't, don't, don't touch me. Don't touch me. That is the last time you'll ever talk to me. Right. Ever. No, that, right, that is the last time you'll ever talk to me. Uh, hey, it's it's me again. Uh, I'm back to say congratulations to to Shirley Henderson, who uh, I don't think I've ever had more fun working with someone. Bobby Frick, can you help us with this? Zori? You are clearly an absolute and utter genius, Shirley. Um, not to make light of Stuart. Stuart also deserved, uh, but y you're just, you really are remarkable. We make him translate it, he won't remember anything. George, remember I go black. Oh, black, black. There must be some other way. I cannot thank you enough for, uh, for your uh, time and patience with, with me and with us, and congratulations on this Baptist Scotland Award. Howard and Scriber, low-key, zero-fuss genius. We're so gummy to you, spongy car but. She's richly deserving of every award going, not just a BAFTA. But if there's one going for a thoroughly decent human being, Cheryl should get that too. I believe that no one is born evil. I can't think of any actor who deserves an award more than Shirley. Oh, that'll do. And I really wish I was there to see it tonight. What are you two talking about? Football! What are you talking about? Shopping! Congratulations, Cheryl. Wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding for this year's Outst uh, BAFTA Scotland Award for Outstanding Contribution to Film and Television, the wonderful, incomparable Shirley Henderson. racing too. <laughs> uh, it's just been a laugh really all these years. It's been good fun. So, um, gosh, um, John, thank you. You're just brilliant. And he is my buddy. He's lovely. He's lovely. Um, <clears throat> gosh, um, I, I don't really know where to begin because there's just been like so many people have been so good to me um, over all these years and given me such opportunities. But um, I've got a wee handful here that if um, that I could uh, mention as quickly as I can because I know it's, it's getting to that time I'm hungry too. So. <laughs> um, okay, so um, I'm going to start with my mum and my dad. Um, <laughs> it's, well, it's just my mum now. My dad's up there somewhere a long, long, long time ago. But um, he was there right at the beginning of all of this. And, uh, well, when I was about... Um, uh, 12, one summer, my mum and dad decided to take us to Butlins for our summer holiday. Um, we heard there was a talent contest there. I learnt a song, sang my song and, uh, in the contest, and I won as a week's holiday. But, <laughs> but the really nice thing that happened from that was um, somebody saw me and they offered me my very first profession, my, my very first gig, which was to sing in a boxing ring in, <laughs> in, uh, in between the bouts in King Carden, where I grew up, the village I grew up in. Um, and uh, 
that summer, you know, that's when I started to get that feeling, you know, um, like to be up on a stage or a boxing ring, as in my case, felt kind of, <laughs> kind of um, like, um, like the world was opening up a wee bit, although those words, I wouldn't have been the actual words that would have gone through my head, just like it's, the world's changing and it's exciting and I wanted a bit more of it. So mum and dad for that sort of slightly life-changing holiday, thank you so much. Um, a few years later, I was leaving drama school. I wrote loads of letters to try and get a job. Um, only one man wrote back to me and said he was going to come and see me. His name was Leonard White. He was at STV Studios. And, um, and uh, uh, he um, gave me my very first um, professional acting job, which was to play a schoolgirl who was actually really a witch. And uh, I, I seem to always be playing schoolgirls or, or witches or goblins or something <laughs> like that, even then. You know. So anyway, um, it, well, he's, he's kind of, um, if Leonard was still with us, he'd be like over 100 because it's such a long time ago now. But I've never, ever forgotten you, Leonard, and your kindness towards me. And wherever you are, thank you. Um, so, um, so um, okay, so I'm going to mention Robert Carlyle because... I love Robert Carlyle, uh, and because, well, apart from giving me one of my very first proper screen kisses down um, at the lockside under the moonlight in Hamish Macbeth, it was kind of a magical moment for me. I don't know if it was for Robert, but it was for me. Um, but um, apart from that, the way, the way Robert worked was, uh, it was really interesting to me because he would, uh, he'd always kind of play around with the dialogue a bit, and on that job and another job I did with him, he would always say things like, um, Let's just let's just see what happens. Let's not overwork it. Let's not over rehearse. Let's just let's just see. Turn the camera and see. And I'd I'd never really come across that way of working before, and it, it was, um, and it kind of stayed with me, and uh, and uh, and it, it still does. And so, Robert, thank you so much for that wee insight into that way of working. Um, okay, okay, hold on a minute. I'm terrible. Give me, give me a second. Okay, so okay, next um, is um, Irvin Welsh and your amazing imagination came. Because without you, Irvin, I would never have met this man, John S. Baird, who is so brilliant and just amazing to work with and just, just lovely, a lovely, lovely person. So, Irvin, um, I loved having shit thrown over me by um, <laughs> you and Brenda. I loved getting filthy with James McAvoy. I love being bad on wedding bells with the girls, Michelle Gomez, Kathleen McDermott, Shauna McDonald, such brilliant, brilliant, brilliant actresses. Thank you so much for that. Okay, the last person I'm going to mention is Michael Winterbottom for opening up my world to improvising on film. I couldn't get enough of it and love working with him so much. Um, so that's just a, a few. There's like, um, oh, my hands are shaking. It's so, so <laughs> never back up here. Um, my, um, uh, there's so many over all of these years um, that are in my heart and have been so good to me. Um, so, um, well, my agent's here. She's lovely, Sian. She's brilliant. <laughs> And um, my, um, my youngest sister is here, Yvonne. And, well, I have to say, the last, the last few years, like for everybody, for our family too, it's been a wee bit rubbishy. And uh, a few months ago, my wee sister went through open heart surgery. And she's here tonight with me, and she's absolutely amazing. And I love her so very much. Um, so, um, so, so that's kind of really, that's it after really, um, I just... Uh, you know, it's just thank you for thinking about me. It's kind of overwhelming. It's lovely. It's nerve-wracking. It's kind of everything all at once. And um, what I'd like to do really is to dedicate um, this uh, to my dad because, um, uh, well, it's such a long time since I've seen him and I, I, I miss him so much. And um, when I was a girl, um, my dad used to sometimes go to the pub on a Saturday night. He'd come home, he'd be really happy. We'd be excited because dad would sometimes bring home a carton of beef curry from the one and only Chinese takeaway in the village. And me and my mum and my two sisters and my dad, we'd sit around and we'd share that and it would just be great. And then dad would say to me, come on, Cheryl, let's go out for a walk. Um, I was the oldest, so I went out for a walk with my dad into the dark and the cold. And we'd walk the streets and then he'd look up at the sky and the stars and uh, he'd he'd start to talk to me and he'd say things like, you do realise there's a whole world out there, don't you? You know, there's things to do, there's adventures to have and people to see and all that. And I didn't know what he was talking about because I was just a wee girl and my world was really, really tiny. But he said, um, all you have to do is dream. Just dare to dream, pet. So, Daddy, I try to dream. And this is for you, wherever you are. Um, <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody who has um, ever crossed paths with me and been good to me. Um, and everybody who has won, been nominated tonight and won awards, you're all just absolutely amazing. And it's time for food now and toilet. Thank you very much. <laughs> Beautiful, Charlene. Thank you, she did. How nerve You were brilliant. Congratulations. You got that one. Oh! Right then. Right then. Not quite yet. One second. Thank you. Just one second. Hugging, kissing, eating, drinking. Just a second. Congratulations to everybody who is clutching their trophies and to all tonight's nominees. It's been the most wonderful, inspiring evening, celebrating, but also thinking of the future. Like Paul says, there is so much more we can do. We're so good at telling stories. We just need the opportunity. And as, as she just said, dreaming, Shirley just said, if you've got a dream, go for it. So I hope you've all taken inspiration this evening from everybody who's been up here and from all the nominees that you've seen tonight. You're all absolutely wonderful. I've been Edith Bowman. This has been BAFTA Scotland celebrating the very best in Scottish film and television. Thank you so much to our presenters. <laughs>